Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Europa in Silas 4. I'm your Chief Trunka, and uh, as some of you know, or many of you know, uh, the patch Eldorado, or the DLC Eldorado, has recently come out for EU4, and with it there have been a lot of new changes. And one of them is the Custom Nation Designer, that, just for those of you who don't know, uh, allows you to basically create your own nation and uh, play as it. So you get the own ideas, you, you get to change the ruler, the colors, the name of the dynasty, everything. You can really, you can change the government. It's really cool and it does add a lot of, you know, it, it does add a lot of things, mostly for people who have played EO4 for a long time. I think beginners don't really need that because they will have a lot of new stuff they can explore anyways. Um, but people who have played EO4 for a long time and always kind of played the same countries, they can now try something new and play their own nation. So that's very cool. And because of that uh, nation designer, uh, I came up with an idea. Well, there's one cool thing that I like because it was just my birthday recently and uh, I actually got uh, a book uh, from my favorite author. His name is Terry Pratchett. Uh, some of you might know him. And uh, his favorite series is actually the Discworld series. Um, and uh, yeah, well, I got one of those books, uh, w one of his books, it's called Raising Steam. And uh, yeah, I was, I just started to read it and I was like, you know what would be really cool? If some of the nations in the Discworld uh, that are displayed, uh, if I could play as them in EU4, and I thought, you know, with the new custom nation designer, I could actually do that. Um, long story short, uh, I came up with that idea, or I just had that idea to do this, and I was checking, uh, you know, checking into Steam and wanted to uh, start up the game and thought, think about how I can do those uh, nation designers and how I can design these uh, nations. And what happened, I, for some reason, went into the Steam Workshop and I found this awesome mod, the awesome mod called Discworld Mod. And, um, yeah, so this probably, like, this does seem weird to you. If, you, if you're used to EU4, then obviously this looks different because this is already uh, showing the Discworld. So now I have uh, really talked quite a lot and, and teased quite a long time, so I'm actually going to show you what I'm talking about. So this is the Discworld. It does look like a disc, right? Because it is. Um, so yeah, so this basically, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, Terry Pratchett, uh, a British author, he created this world, so he has, I think, published 50 or about a little more than 50 books um, where he really, you know, he started uh, one part and then he just described the entire world, this entire disc world, um, with characters, excuse me, characters, nations, uh, events, everything. He just created an entire new fantasy world. And basically, within this world, um, everything is possible. There is magic, there are dwarves, and uh, vampires, and werewolves, and everything. Pretty much, really everything you can think of. But still, at the same time, there are inventions like uh, computers, and uh, photography, and, you know, so that's, uh, yeah. Th there's everything you, you, you kind of uh, find in this, in this world. And uh, although it is fantasy, um, Terry Pratchett also um, picks up, you know, certain social trends that are affecting our life today, and he c kind of uh, portrays that um, in a satirical, ironic, hu very humorous way uh, in his Discworld series. And um, I, I, I can't really give a good example right now, but it's it's best for you if you actually read, if you actually, uh, you know, read books yourselves because then you can actually uh, find out about this so um, what do I want to do well I just think um, as I've already uh, talked about how much I love his book series um, I just thought you know this awesome book series this awesome story of the Discworld would really fit to EU4 and of course I am a uh, yeah well I just I just love playing EO4 and I love uh, Terry Pratchett's Discworld. So I'm just so happy that someone created this mod uh, with this awesome world. Um, yeah, that I could actually play this. And uh, I've not I've not really played it uh, yet, 
but I want to do in this series, but I'm going to try a different approach. If you have watched some of my other videos, um, especially the EO4 videos, um, you see that I'm kind of the type of guy who does like to play his own or to, tries to fulfill his own goals, but at the same time, I often go for achievements. So I'm really playing competitively, like I really want to achieve something. Now in this series, I kind of want to do something else. I want to try to have a more narrative playstyle. So I don't want to, you know, pick Bubavad right here and just conquer all of it because that's probably easy. I don't know. Maybe it's hard. Who knows? But this is not the goal of this campaign. The goal of this campaign or of this series um, is that I introduce people to the Discworld and EU4 alike. So I really on a really basic level, I'm gonna explain some of the EU4 mechanics for those of you who came here because of the Discworld, and for those of you who watch this video because of EU4, um, I just want to give you an insight about uh, the, all the Disc Discworld characters, all the nations, everything, uh, because it's really interesting and it's a lot of fun. Um, Obviously, the focus is going to be on the disc world itself and not on the EU4 mechanics, but that will kind of go along. Uh, a lot of my... A lot of the things that I want to talk about are, of course, um, kind of tied to the nation that I play. Like, for example, if I play Ang Mopok, which is uh, the, the biggest city in the disc world, uh, obviously, then I'm going to talk more about all the the city itself and the people that live in the city that are important for the city for example the patrician Hafelok Vitinari which is the leader or the kind of the head of the city of course I'm gonna talk about him um, and I'm gonna talk less about uh, King Basia Kriosoto of Clutch so that's kind of what you can expect from me and um, so probably the first episodes like today and maybe even the next one I will go over the, or I'll talk over the Discworld in more a general way, like I will explain a little bit on, on you know what it is and what you can do, what you, yeah, what it's all about. And uh, once I've picked a nation that I want to play, I will, like I said, uh, focus more on that nation. And the goal is that I will eventually cover all of the Discworld nations and characters as as far as that is actually possible but I'm, I'm gonna give it a try you know and I hope that this way you can actually um, find your way into the disc world and then you maybe start you know reading one or two books and just have fun with it really this is uh, a fun this should be a fun series uh, for your entertainment obviously for my entertainment as well and um, because well I like that I I'm doing this for you, of course, but uh, I also enjoy that, and uh, yeah. So, I guess I'm gonna start right here and talk a little bit about the Discworld in general. Well, so as I already said, or as you as you maybe can see, it's not a round world. It's not a not a globe like our Earth, but it is well an actual disc. It's a flat world, and this is probably one of the best examples to show what or in, in which way um, Terry Pratchett's humor uh, kind of or in, in which way he can conveys the humor so um, as you probably know it, earlier a lot of people actually believed that the earth was flat because well if you're on the other side if it's if it would be a globe then people would think, well, you would fall off, which is, you know, given given the time and, and the knowledge they had at that time uh, was a pretty reasonable thought. So people thought it would make more sense if there would be a, a round disk and the sun would orbit around it. And uh, this is exactly what the disk world is about. It's a flat world and the sun, which you cannot see right now, um, but the sun circles around the world. Um, also, since Terry Pratchett does like to mix up uh, certain beliefs, he also, um, well, he also um, answered the question on, well, what is then, if this is a flat world, if this is a disc world, what is beneath it? Well, there was a, there was a, 
I would say a myth or a legend. Uh, I think it was from the region of India, where people believed that the flat world would actually be located on four on, on the backs of four giant elephants, and the elephants itself uh, would actually stand on the back of a giant turtle, a space turtle. And uh, this is actually, unfortunately, you cannot see this turtle, but if you have watched my thumbnail, you actually get the idea of uh, what is this. So you, you can see the um, uh, the big turtle, and the name of the turtle in the disc world is Great Atuin. Or, well, actually the name is Atuin, but you also say Great Atuin because it's a really big turtle. And um, I believe that the elephants also have some names, but I don't remember. Uh, maybe they don't, but there are four elephants, and yeah, that's pretty much the setup of the world. Um, obviously, the water uh, does f flow or kind of flood over the edge of this world, and uh, yeah, just into space. And then, I don't know if it disappears or if it uh, kind of just recreates in the middle of the disc world. I don't really know, I might, might have to look that up. But anyways, so that kind of gives you the idea of uh, what the Discworld is all about. And as I said before, it is possible, uh, or not possible, but it's it's every single creature you can probably think of is in the Discworld. Uh, there are, well, as I mentioned before, ma vampires, werewolves, all kinds of stuff, and uh, also magic can happen. So what that means, there are also an abundance of gods because what happens to gods or oh, how do they get power well gods get power in this world um, if you believe it in them and that's kind of the same thing in the real world um, but I don't really want to touch religion because that's always a hot topic anyway so in this in the disc world at least um, if you believe in a god then he gains power and at the same time the more power a god ha has um, the more he can actually do for you. So if you have one that would just say, you know, you you just start believing in a god, then you would actually create that god. And the more you believe, and the more temples you build, and the more other people believe in your religion, uh, the stronger the god actually gets, and the more he can do for you in your time of need. So that's really, I think that's a really nice thought about uh, the whole religion thing, and it also makes sense why you would want other people to believe in your god, because, well, then your god gets stronger. Um, yeah, but I think that was uh, pretty much everything, ye but it was a pretty good general, uh, ex well, explanation, not really explanation, but there was a kind of an introduction to the disc world. And I think I should now decide which uh, country or which nation I should pick first for more detailed information. And I think I will... Well, there are a lot of fun nations to play as. Actually, the, the guy who made this mod uh, has six, six nations uh, put on here where th that would be interesting to play as. And... Um, Actually, what I what I also think this is a good place to uh, explain some EU4 mechanics. Um, in EU4, you would have uh, different start dates right here, right? And uh, every start date you click, you will have different interesting nations to play as. For example, the Hundred Years' War. Obviously, England and France are interesting countries to play, and it's not so interesting to play as maybe Timbuktu. Uh, whereas in other times, it might be more interesting to play as Austria or Prussia. And so, that's kind of uh, what this, uh, the mod, the, the guy who made the mod uh, also did here. So, those are probably, I'm just going to go through this list. So, Angkor as I said, is the biggest city in the Discworld. So, it's obviously very important and quite fun to play as. Um, or an interesting choice, as it says here. An interesting choice during this time period. Um, clutch. Um, I've already mentioned that uh, these guys before. Uh, they're also very interesting because they are kind of rivaled to Ankh-Morpork. Um, who else? We have Überwald. That's also one of them that I uh, uh, talked about. Uh, just a quick thing. In Überwald, they're uh, vampires, kind of the high society. 
and they kind of have a rivalry with the werewolves that are also uh, quite present in Überwald. Um, actually, uh, Überwald is going to be good country to play as, but I'm not sure if I'm going to pick these ones. Um, another one, Genoa. Um, I don't know much about Genoa. It does say a merchant republic, which makes sense. Um, but I don't really know too much about it. Actually, um, I'm, as a German myself, Genoa is how we would write the actual town of Genoa in Italy. That's, that's how we spell it. Now, the German books, as I, um, as I read some of Terry Bridges' books in English and German, I've started reading them in German and now I'm trying to read them more English. It's, it's harder, but it's also more fun. Anyway, so the German spelling would have a double N just to dis distinguish it from uh, this Genoa or from the real Genoa in Italy. Anyway, so yeah, Genoa would be interesting because it's a merchant republic. What else do we have? We have Omnia. Um, yeah, I don't really know too much about Omnia. I think that they have, uh, they have, they are uh, theocracy, so they have started some kind of uh, religion, so they might be very interesting. Actually, let's check the religious map mode. So there are different map modes here in U4, where you can also see uh, the terrain, you can see the political map mode, where you can see all the borders, um, the religion map mode, where you can see what religions are present. Uh, so you see free polytheism. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, because every god kind of can just exist if you believe in him. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, Imperial map mode, that's kind of broken, that probably doesn't really exist. Might be a bug, we'll see about that later. Uh, trade map mode, not, not too important, and diplomatic map modes, also not too important. Yeah, um, but so they have started some kind of religion. Um, and what is the last one? It's the Agathian... Agathian... Agathian? Agathian? I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's an empire. And this country kind of uh, resembles China and Japan, kind of the, the uh, Far Eastern nations, and uh, it's supposed to have a lot of gold. And why is that so? Because gold is heavy, and you might see that um, this is a disc, and I think this point, Darkon, is kind of the middle of, well, almost, almost the center of the, of the disc world. So. You should imagine, you know, if, if this side is heavier than the elephants that are uh, over here, 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 and here, the two elephants that are over here would have to carry more weight than other ones. So this continent uh, has so much gold in it uh, so that it's heavier. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of the logic that uh, exists here on the Discworld. Anyway, I think that I cannot... I, like, I, as I said, I want to play as all of the nations, at least as all of the interesting nations, so definitely going to play as all of these six, probably even more. Um, but I don't think I can pass on Angmorpok as playing in the first one. So I'm pretty sure Angmorpok is going to be the first one I'll play as. Actually, I have decided I will play as Angmorpok, so I'm going to press play right now. Um, so, it's just initializing the game real quick. Um, what about Amova? Well, as I said, it's the biggest city in the disc world. It has about 1 million inhabitants, and you could kind of compare it to, I would say, 19th century London or maybe New York. Um, I might be wrong. I mean, there's there's certainly different, uh, a lot of different parallels that you can uh, kind of draw, but I think Thinking of it as 19th century London is probably pretty good. Um, yeah, so, but before I go into more detail about Ankh Morpork, I think uh, I will end this episode here because that was more of a general uh, discussion today. And um, yeah, so I hope that this format kind of interests you um, and that also it, it helps you, you know, either. Uh, you know, learn more about EU4 or learn more about the Discworld, and I certainly hope that it's fun for you. Um, yeah, so I hope that I will see you next time, and uh, if you liked the video, please, uh, you know, like, comment, uh, and even subscribe, 
if you want to see more of this series or more of my other videos. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. It's Chief Tronka, signing off.